Hey, it's Dr. Beverly Wixon, and this is your Sunday night encouragement. You know, we all get down on ourselves. It's, it's human nature to get down on ourselves, and many times we spend way too much time beating ourselves up over things. And it's so easy for us to fall into the negativity trap of, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, you know, focusing on how we came short of our goals, um, came short of setting goals. And it's actually okay not to set goals if you just, you're, maybe your goal is just so big, you just say infinity. That's cool. Um, but, but you know, we get, then we beat ourselves up for not reaching it. And then we think, well, maybe I should make my goal smaller so that you know, it's easier to achieve. Well, here's the thing. If it's easy to achieve, it's really not a goal. And if it's so far out there to infinity, it's really not a goal. And it's, but it, like I said, it is okay to not have a goal. You know, your goal can always be more. It doesn't have to be 10. It can simply be more, more than you did the last time, more money than you made last month, more money than you've made so far. Um, just, make a lot of money. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an actual goal for that. Your goal has to be more in the in the actions. I'm going to reach out to so many people this today. So then it's not a goal actually, it's technically a task. I'm going to reach out to this many people. I'm going to put a CTA on all my videos um, or the video I do today or the video I do this week. You know, then it's a task, not so much a goal, and it might actually make you feel a little better because then you might achieve much more than you thought you would achieve and you're, you're celebrating the actions instead of the end result. Because oftentimes when we're only looking at the end result, we don't think to look at the actions that are gonna get us there. We're just focused on, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And we never, I mean, we don't have to know the how in the beginning. We, you know, we all know this. We have to know the why. But eventually the how has to start to come in. And that's all those little actions. And it may only be one action. Chances are it is. What's one thing I can do today to move me one step closer to that end result? But like I said, then we happen to get down on, our, on ourselves. And we start beating ourselves up because we start thinking things like I should be further along. We compare ourselves to other people, whether that's in as an entrepreneur or anything, we start to think I should be further along. I should be further along. I should be further along. I should be doing more. I should be earning more based on our age, based on our industry, based on how long we say we've been working at something. And the reason I say say we've been working at it is because a lot of times we were just dabbling. We weren't truly working at something. And that can be whether you're talking about your yard, planting flowers, or building a business, anything. We tend to get down on ourselves. So what I want you to do, because we're still in the new year. I, I consider January, the whole month of January as being into the new year. And what I'd like you to do is take 10 minutes and make a list of accomplishments, things you accomplished in 2022. Maybe it was you created a new habit. Maybe it was you did the cha-ching sheet for at least one month. Maybe, maybe you earned more money than you did last year. Maybe you connected with more people. You sold a certain amount of products or a certain amount of services, whether they were $1 services or a million dollar service. How many did you sell? You put that down. Maybe it was you in walking, you know, how many steps you took or how many miles you walked or how many days you walked. Maybe it was something new you learned, like a dance class. How many hours did you spend learning that? How many d nights did you go to class? Um, how many weeks in a row did you change your sheets? You know, wh what did you elevate in your life? Did you go out and buy new underwear and throw out all the old stuff? That's an elevation. That's an ex excellent elevation. If you have not done that, do that. It will make you feel so much better. And it doesn't matter if they're fancy underwear, you know, um, lace and satin and silk, or just plain old fruit of the loom cotton underwear, you know. You buy all new underwear at the start of the year, it just, it starts off your whole year feeling so good. So go do that. Um, 
but also make a list of things that you accomplished this past year. And if you can't think of, you know, if you get to the point that you're like, I can't think of any more than like three or four that I did last year, then make it things you've accomplished throughout your life. It doesn't have to be all just one year. It could be the last five years. It could be the last 10 years. It could be your entire life, things that you have accomplished. Because when you are feeling that down on yourself and you're starting to get into that little pity party, which we all have them, we all have them. I know I'm not alone with this. Every single one of us has pity parties. We just don't want to wallow in it. Maybe for a couple, you know, a couple little minutes maybe. But we don't want to wallow in it for days. So have your accomplishments list. And when you start feeling that kind of ick feeling and you're starting to get in that self-pity and that pity party and you're starting to feel like you're wallowing, it's like, okay, I'm going to wallow for one more minute. And then you're like, okay, two minutes have passed. I'm still wallowing. Find that list. Don't have it just up here, because if it's just up here, the little voice that is saying, oh, keep wallowing in your self-pity, that's going to be a whole lot louder than the accomplishments that are up here. So write it down. Have it on the list. Have it on your phone. Have it on your computer, wherever, but have your list and pick it up when you're getting into that wallowing in self-pity. Pick up that list and read it. Just start reading over it. And you'll see, you know, I did do a lot. I did a lot of stuff. I have an accomplishments list on my phone. I have a list of all the belly dance routines that I have, that I know, that I, that I have learned. And I'm about to take 10 minutes right now and write down everything that I accomplished in 2022. Because it's amazing when I think about it, what I accomplished, but I want to write it down so that I can go back and look at it. And if you do that, then save it so that at the end of the year for 2023, you can look back at 2022 as you're making your 2023 list and see how much more you did in 2023. And just in case you have missed it, don't forget, as you're wrapping up the holidays, write a letter to yourself about the things that you want to happen in 2023. Put it in with your Christmas cards, if you have Christmas cards or any other kind of cards. Put it in something that you know that when you pull it out next year, it will be staring you in the face and you can read over it and see if what you wrote down came to pass. Some of it will, some of it won't. Some of it will have come to pass like the cup overflowing um, more than you expected. So two, two, three things, two, three things. Make a list of accomplishments and hang on to it for 2022 or further back if necessary and write a letter to yourself of what you're hoping happens in 2023. Those things. And I would love to hear some of what you either want to happen in 2023 or some of the accomplishments from 2022. And I know that's a lot. And some people say that you will get confused, but you know what? I know you are smart people. You are smart people and you can separate that out and decide, do I want to tell her some accomplishments from 2022 or do I want to tell her some things I want to happen in 2023? Either or, or both. Love to hear it in the comments below or even better yet, make a set, make a separate post and put it there. So have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.